everybody. Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. How are you all doing today? I hope you are doing well. I am doing reasonably well. Back is killing me this morning, but huh, there's been a lot of activity over the past couple days. Um, a lot of bending activity. Um, today is Wednesday, November 6th. November. How did that happen? We leave tomorrow for Phoenix and I can't wait. Can't wait. It's a lot of activity. We got a new um a new recliner love seat thing with a console in the middle middle. I don't think the couch that we had um was very nice for my back. So we decided to go. We had a recliner love seat in Sarasota that we loved and we got rid of it. We actually gave it to Ben. Um mostly because we didn't feel it would work in our apartments. Um, but it does work here and we decided to go back to that, which meant we had to get rid of our couch, we had to get rid of our chair, um, got rid of a bunch of furniture. And now Nina, Nina is kind of grumpy <laughs> because she liked that couch. That was her couch. The um, the recliners don't leave a lot of room for kitties to lay with us, so such is the life of a cat. So yeah, a lot of a lot of cleaning of the furniture before Salva we had Salvation Army come and pick it up, so they came this morning. Um, yesterday, I didn't get a video done yesterday. I had a bad morning yesterday, headache and cleaning up after cats and a bug infestation, and by the time I was done with all of that, I didn't feel like talking to anybody. <laughs> Yesterday was not a good day. Ready for Arizona? I'm packed. And when I say I'm packed, I mean my projects are packed. <laughs> Nothing else is, but I have all my projects packed. And I'll, I'll go through those in a bit here. Um, nothing else is packed. Still have to get box mailed to Samuel. Um, but yeah, so I just talked to you on Friday. So I don't have a whole lot to cover. I've been a monogamous stitcher since Friday. I know. But you understand. So I think that's all. Um, as far as the newsy type stuff is concerned. So let's talk stitching. Like I said, monogamous. Patchwork. Isn't it gorgeous? So I'm working with the pinks now. I'm heading into the oranges. So I had said on my video Friday that I would work on shades of gold for the weekend. And then um, I talked about all the silks and said maybe I'll work on patchwork instead. And that's what I did because Shades of Gold is going with me to Phoenix. I decided to work on patchwork. And once I started, I couldn't put it down. So that's what I've been working on every night. Um, and what I'll work on tonight as well. So I got that motif done. And this one almost done. I'll get this one done tonight and start it on the next one, hopefully. So this hot pink, and again, this is Mrs. Seda's Silk Floss. This is a 36 count antique white linen, just a plain old Swigert linen, nothing fancy here. One strand of floss stitched over two. So the hot pink is Mrs. Seda's number three. That lighter pink is E3. And then this kind of orange pinky variegated, that's Supernova. And I tell you what, I know I'm not an orange person. I'm not a pink person, right? I've, I've said that many times, but I adore this colorway. It could be a little bit less orange for my taste, 
but I love the 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 moving into the pink shades, that corally. I mean, it's just so pretty. So there, there, there's another part of this strip coming out down here that I will do again in that. Let me turn to the pattern. So again, Patchwork by Jan, Jan Houtman. Um, it calls for a variety of colors, but again, I'm doing it in the silk floss and doing it as a rainbow. So I am almost done with this motif. Here is that little strip that I still have to do in, let me enlarge that, in the supernova. And then I'll be coming down to this one and this one, and then I'll be, what I'm gonna do is drop down here and then start working my way back up. So I'll be getting into the yellows here and then moving through the yellows and gold. So we have that transition going on in the supernova. So moving from the pink There's Supernova. It is so pretty. Moving from the pink into a much stronger orange. And let me tell you, it's hard to decide where to put some of these, what should come next. So I decided to go with this darker orange after the Supernova to kind of pull out the darker shades in the Supernova. And then we get into a lighter orange. And then I have, this is actually not a Mrs. Sadis. This is somebody else's. I don't remember whether this is a Silks for You. Um, I decided to put this in here so, because even though it's not really this orange, it does shade into this kind of goldy orange rather well. So this is all moving down to that corner. I have then this dark kind of pumpkin. And then we have Sienna. And then we'll be moving into all the yellows. So that's kind of my loose plan at this point. Um, you know, I have these all in order and then I kind of decide more or less what comes next or where. Like the center motif, I was originally planning on just making that the same as this. But I decided to go ahead and put the supernova in there and again, it'll be coming out here too to kind of create more of a transition. I don't know. I'm winging it. I'm winging it. I don't know, but I love it. So I'll work on this again tonight, like I said, and then this will get put away again um, until I get back. I also have been working on my knitting. Hold please. I'm still in the brioche section. You know, working an hour, it takes about a half hour to get across these rows at this point. I think I probably have maybe a half dozen more rows to do in this section. So, yeah, working an hour, I really don't get much done. And if it's even an hour that's uninterrupted, <laughs> or, you know, that doesn't happen very often. I do this in the morning. So this is like my before breakfast project, like when I just want to have a little bit of peace and quiet first thing in the morning, but still be doing something with my hands, I pick up my knitting. Now this will also be going with me on my trip, so I hope to get a chunk of this done while in Arizona as well. You know, a lot of it, a lot of the time, I'm not going to be doing much of anything. <laughs> I'm just going to be relaxing, so that's why so I hope to be getting a lot done. I do have plans, like I said, I do want to go to the attic. Um, Mike and I were talking about what fabric I should use for Farewell to Anger. And I was talking to him, I showed him the size and talking to him about like compared to Harbor Haven, he likes things big. He's a man, size matters, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> I mean, as much as he likes Harbor Haven, he feels like you have to get up close to it to really see any details. And this is true. Farewell to Anger is kind of a different beast because it is a full coverage, lots going on there. But um, he wants it big. He wants it like really noticeable. But he doesn't want it humongous. So I, I was talking about, you know, the different sizes of fabric and, the, you know, I, I was originally thinking 28, one over one. And then when he said he liked it big, I said, well, let me see what 36 count would be. 36 count over two brings it up to, I think it was like 34 by something, 34 inches. And that he felt was too big. So um, we're kind of compromising and I am going to do 25 count, one over one, and that brings the size, the finished size to like um, 25 by something, 25 inches by something. So I am gonna go to the attic and I'm, I'm just gonna get a Lugana. I don't think I'm going to worry about getting the easy grid. I'll ask if they have it, if they carry it. Um, if they do, I might, I don't know. I keep going back and forth on whether I need the grid, whether I need it enough that it's worth the hassle to get the grid lines out. Now again, Farewell to Anger is a dark, I mean, it's a fairly, um, it's very colorful and fairly dark for those that don't know it. This is it here. So I don't know that the grid lines will show in the end, but if they should, I don't know whether I want to have the hassle of trying to get them out because I understand it can be a little bit temperamental. Um, so I might just get 25 count Lugana um, from the attic and um, yeah, not worry about it. So yeah, we'll be going to the attic. The other plan I have, and this is where I would like some input from you guys. Um, I have decided I'm going to start a series called The Basics of Cross Stitch. And I'm going to start from how to pick a kit in a big box store to the basics of the stitch to how to kit up something yourself um, how to use over dyed floss. I mean, all, I have a whole list of things for the basics of cross stitch. If there's anything that you would like me to do a video on, please let me know and I will add it to the list. I'm planning on starting out very basic, of course, but then I'm going to get into more. I'm not going to get into specialty stitches or anything like that. There's enough of that out there. And of course, there's enough of basic stuff out there too, but I, I want to put my own spin on it, I guess. Um, but if there's any ideas that you have for things that you're struggling with, um, you know, I'm gonna do beads, I'm gonna do over dyed floss, I'm going to do switching over to even weave, which I've already have a video on that, so I may just rename it. <laughs> um, but I'm, just, I'm gonna do a whole series and they'll all be separate, fairly short videos. So if there is anything um, that you'd like me to do, let me know and I will add it to the list. Um, projects I'm taking with me. I'm taking my Kindle Fire because that means Santa Fe decor. So I have loved stitching on patchwork, but I have to admit that Santa Fe decor has been calling me. Now, um, I did, you know, I had been working on, um, the fractal bookmark and I completed that one diagonal and started the next. So I decided that I would take Santa Fe decor with me. This will be my project to take with me, my, my small project. And of course, so while I'm there, this is the one that will get worked on when there's good light. I don't have a light, a portable light that I can use at Mike's parents. So it's just like their, you know, lamps, their living room lamps. So in the evenings when we're just sitting around watching TV, I will be working on this. Whoops, needles coming out. Oh, 
I will be working on this beauty. And like I said, I really hope to get a chunk of this done while we're there. I do have a clip-on light in the RV that I'll be using in the RV. Now here's an interesting thing I wanted to mention along with the whole furniture thing. Like I said, I feel like my, the old couch wasn't kind. You know, the, the cushion, it's only three years old, but the cushion's already dipping, you know, where I sit all the time. And I sit on this kind of bigger rounded section, so it's harder for me to get in and out of when my back is hurting. But in addition, okay, stitching in hand, you know, I'm like this, I'm right-handed. So I have my light coming over my left shoulder. And I think part of my problem is I'm kind of like a flower bending towards the sun. Because it's over here, I'm constantly bending so I can be, and it might not even be that much of a bend, sometimes it may be, but for the most part, I'm always bending a little bit to get more into the light. My pain is stenosis of the SI joint, the sacrum ilium joint. So right on the left side, and I think a large part of it, if not caused by, at least irritated by, my constantly bending to the left. Because I spend, you know, by, after dinner, once I get seated in my seat, I'm sitting there for a good three or four hours without getting up in the evenings when we're watching TV and I'm stitching. So I'm in that position for a long period of time. Now I'm, you know, moving my legs around, but still I'm constantly. So we moved the light to the front and while it's still to the left, it's more coming towards me over the front. Once I get, I still have to replace that mistaken um, extender rod that I got for the Lowry. I'm gonna order that once we get back. Um, then I'll probably start using my Lowry stand more because then I can have it, uh, and I'll get a clip on light for the Lowry stand so I can have it right over top of me. But anyway, um, if any of you guys are having the same issue, think about how you're sitting and if you might be tilting more one way or the other. I'm hoping, now it's only been three days since we got this new furniture and well, two days two evenings and rearrange things. So it's not like I see a huge difference at this point, but I'm hoping it'll make a difference. All right, so Shades of Gold is going with me. That will be my evening project. And Santa Fe Decor is going with me. Now I did, I have them all in my, or both of them in my um, Garon Toten bag. This is the one I got at StitchCon with this absolutely gorgeous fabric. Um, I did finish putting all of the um, flosses, I'm trying to figure out which way my notebook goes, all of the flosses in my notebook. I had been up until this point kind of filling the pockets as I came across a new color that I hadn't used yet. And so, but I still had um, oh, maybe 10 or 15 that I needed to fill in. So I finished doing that. So all of my pockets are filled. They don't all have the needles in them yet, but I am ready completely to go. And this is for, again, um, Santa Fe decor. So that is all ready to go. My knitting is going with me. I have to get a different knitting bag to shove that into. I need a separate suitcase just for my projects. I told Mike that. He's like, oh, there'll be room in mine. We have a bunch of winter clothes in the RV and we're gonna need that for up in Flagstaff. I think the daytime, the high temperature is gonna be in the 50s and the lows is gonna be in the 30s and 20s. We can use the fireplace, we can use the electric blanket. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> but I do have winter clothes in the RV so I don't have to pack any of that. And in Phoenix, it's still in the 80s um, during the day and getting down into the 50s at night. So I um, don't have to pack a whole lot of heavy clothes. And Mike hardly packs any clothes at all. So he's like, oh, there'll be plenty of room in my suitcase. The other thing I got ready is the, um, the stuff I need for the Time for Seasons stitch along, Donna Bayless's by the Baby Needle Arts. So I did cut and I sewed, zigzagged around my fabric. So that is all ready to go. This is that 35 count raw linen, 
that I have. And then, you know, I don't, I don't really know what colors that I need. And I didn't want to take all of them. You know, when she sends you that, um, the introductory PDF, it has the total list of the colors that you need. And I know that I don't need all of them. I don't know which ones for sure that I need. But I, I'm thinking, you know, the first, when she was doing the sneak peeks, the first scene that she showed us was summer. So um, hopefully she's not going to totally flip things around on us. I'm assuming that's the first scene we're going to get to stitch. <laughs> so I kind of put together the ones that I think go in that scene. So this is my sky. This is Kansas Sky by Victorian Needle. Victorian Victorian sampler shop threads and by the way if you haven't signed up for her newsletter yet please do she has more giveaways going on and like I said when you get into the holidays she always has giveaways so I have um, a bunch of different greens there's several different greens in that scene different um, the the hills and the grasses the bushes so I packed a bunch of those. I have this for $8.90, which I'm sure is the, the dark green bushes with the red flowers. I decided this, she has those brown corners. This is Wine Cellar from Victorian Motto, and it's kind of a brown and, and wine. Um, so I'm gonna use this. I have plenty of it. This is a 20 yard skein. Um, but I thought instead of just doing all that brown, be in you know do something a little more interesting um so yeah my water is going to be so the water is 502 and 503 this is my substitute for 502 this is coastal seaweed by victorian motto and this is my substitute for 503 it's peacock elegance by xg designs everything else i'm using the called for dmc's so I, I just have, actually, again, kind of guessing what we would need. I pulled out another one of these pages, the coin pocket pages, and just cut off some lengths, put the, um, oops, that's backwards, put the, I had already had tape on here because I was using this for, I thought I was going to use this for um, Santa Fe decor. This is the smaller pockets, um, and I had started this and I decided the pockets were too small. But I think they'll work out okay for this. So piece of scotch tape just wrote on there. I had to scribble out what I had written on before, but the color number, number and the symbol. I'm not going to worry about having individual needles in this one. And I only cut a couple lengths for each pocket because um, I am working with one strand over two on this 35 count. So it's not like I'll be going through a ton of floss. Um, certainly not before I get back. This is my plain project. This comes out on the 15th. Um, well, it might be my evening of the 15th and then the plain project. So the 15th, we are heading down. We stay at a hotel by the airport. Um, for these flights out, the flight leaves at 8.30, so we have to be at the airport at 6.30. So we just stay at a hotel. There's a Denny's right there. We have breakfast and then um, head over the over to the airport. So the, I'll probably start this. Like I said, the, the first pattern comes out on the 15th. So this will be hotel stitching and airplane stitching. So we shall see how much I get done. Um, Hall. Really no hall to speak of. Still waiting on the Serenity bead pack. Um, ordered some things from Shakespeare's Peddler that I'm looking forward to getting. If it doesn't come today, I won't get it till I get back. Um, I think that's about it. But I did get... I was going to save off a picture and I forgot. I did get, if you remember, I signed up for the, for Laura Nelkin's Lola's Choice Kit. I signed up for three months. This is my third kit. So this is my last month in this, in this um, membership that I signed up for. And these are little fingerless mitts. 
she send with it. This is John Arbor yarn from Devon, England. It is a blend of fifty percent Exmoor Blueface, thirty percent Devon Blueface Leicester, and twenty percent Devon Wensleydale. So I believe those are all well Devon, of course, they are all British yarns. This I'm not sure whether this was um created it was probably created just for this kit because that's what Laura does she sources unusual yarns and so it's exclusive to the kit so I was going to um, find a picture for you to see what this is they're really pretty hold beautiful 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 stitching and a beautiful yarn. When will I do it? I don't know. This is a 50 gram um, skein, 212 yards. So obviously enough to make two mitts. Um, I don't need mitts like this in Hawaii. So I don't know when I'll make that, but it's pretty. She also sent along a little, this is from Katrinkles, a little um, key tag and some hard candies. She always sends little special treats like that as well. And as well in her big monthly club, the um, N Club, there's always wonderful treats in those. So, thank you, Laura, I love it. All right, I think that is all for today. Like I said, flying out tomorrow, the next time you see me. I will be in Arizona. I am planning on doing videos there. I hope to do a Stitch With Me video. Um, be good if I could do one on Friday. My in-laws are gonna be out running around a lot on Friday and Mike will be dealing with the RV and the battery. So I should have time, quiet time at the house to do a Stitch With Me. So you'll see me working on something. It's either going to be Shades of Gold or Santa Fe decor. <laughs> Not much choice there. I, I probably won't get down to the attic <coughs> until after we get back from Flagstaff. Um, but anyways, you will see me in Arizona. In the meantime, you have the next card. These are the cards that I got from Loretta. They are ter from Teresa Kogut. Kogut. Angel Kindness cards. And this week's card says, God created you with special talents and gifts. Embrace your uniqueness. You are extraordinary. I love you guys. Remember my 6,000 subscriber giveaway. If you haven't watched that video and let me know what you like, please do. Um, that will be going on for another couple weeks. I won't close that out until I get back from Arizona. Um, a, a ton of you have already commented, and that's cool. But you have time, but don't wait too long. Um, so until Arizona, have a wonderful remainder of your week, and I will talk to you soon. I love you guys. Bye-bye.